Hi, my name is Shane McGuigan, boxing coach to Carl Frampton. I've been training Carl since I was 21, which is seven years now. And I've seen him go from untelevised shows to winning the world title to unifying the world title and then going on to headlining in New York and Las Vegas. The training regime is always pretty tough, so I'm training twice a day for 14 weeks, Monday to Friday, twice a day. I have one session on a Saturday, and we go again on Monday. It's pretty intense. I do a lot of sparring. I, I spar more rounds than any other fighter that I know. You know, with the pad work, it's, it's the closest thing that we can get to resembling the, the boxing. And we're going to work on strategies for the fight, and by the time he gets in the ring, most of these things are almost choreographed, that it just happens naturally, and that's what you see on fight night. What you're effectively doing with a kid is you don't want to lose his unique selling point as a, as a fighter, but you want to embellish that, you want to make it better, you want to shore up any mistakes he's making, you want to improve his defense, improve his power. If you're not fit and explosive, uh, you won't be able to change gear when you need to, when you hurt a guy and he's in trouble, and you may, you may have one chance to get rid of him. You've got to be able to explode with everything you've got, and then be able to come back and recover quickly be able to do it again and again, that's the trick. He's accustomed to doing his job, but he's also in phenomenal shape, pushes himself to the limit every day in training camp. And he's one of these guys that doesn't really like training, but, you know, he needs a, a rocket up the backside every now and again. No fighter is the perfect fighter. Um, sometimes I get too eager, sometimes I get, you know, I, I, I feel like I've got a good chin, and I'm happy to take punches when I don't need to, and it's kind of, a lot of boxers have this, macho feeling and uh, it's kind of like trying to prove to the other guy that you can't you can't hurt them but it's not it's not a good good way to fight but sometimes the blood rushes to your head and i like to get involved in a fight when i don't necessarily have to that's it chest out some people can punch short some people can punch long and it's making sure that you hit your opponent right at that moment that you can have the most devastating effect. And that is timing, that is patience and setting the traps up. A lot of guys try to put everything in the shot and, and they're the ones that a lot of the times, if they land, an opponent can maybe tense up and uh, it, hit him, it hits him, but he's, he's braced for it and, and it doesn't hurt him. You could maybe look through your entire career and pick out half a dozen to 10 times where you know, a guy that might have fought 35, 40 times where he'll have landed the perfect punch maybe half a dozen times. And sometimes you hit them early on in the fight when they're just not expecting it. But the, the punches, let me reiterate, the punches that do the damage are the punches you don't see. I'm going to take you through typical shots that professional boxers and amateur boxers throw throughout a contest. We're going to start with a jab. The jab is a straight arm shot and it fills a distance between yourself and the opponent. Following the jab, we're going to throw the right hand. The right hand travels further than the jab and it engages your hips and that can generate a lot more power. You see lots of knockouts with this shot. After the right hand, we're going to throw the left hook. The left hook is a bent arm shot and it's got a great, great loss of purchase. Once again, you can get lots of rotation on it. After the left hook, we're gonna throw the right uppercut. The right uppercut, you have to be very close to your opponent to get it off, and it can, all the power is generated through your trunk and your legs, and it can really lift a person's head up, especially if they're looking eye level to you. It comes right underneath the guard. Once you throw in the right uppercut, you can get the left uppercut off. The left uppercut is similar to the, the right uppercut, but with less power, but what it is, is very good to set up a neck shot. The neck shot can be the final one, which is the right hook. Similar to the right hand, it, can, it generates a lot of distance and it's got a lot of purchase on it. It just comes around the back of the guard and it can knock you out.
they call a man with no shins? Oh, Shinless? Is, um, Tony. Tony. <laughs> 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 very good, very good. Yes. Fella goes to the doctor, he says, I've got, I've got uh, a problem. And he says, what's the problem? He says, well, he says, sometimes I wake up in the morning and he says, and he says, I think I'm a, a he says, I think I'm a wigwam. I know the mornings I wake up and I think I'm a teepee, and he says, I got your problem, you're too tense. <laughs> <laughs> Our fella goes to the doctor and because uh, he's got some money stuck up his bum. And uh, <laughs> so so he goes in, the doctor pulls out £1,999 and he says, I knew it didn't feel too grand. <laughs>